everyone. Um, please let us know if you can hear hear me and how the audio is um, this week. So we had some technical difficulties last week, so um, we're hoping that we have resolved those. So let us know if we're coming in clearly and without an echo this time. I hope so. Okay. Yeah, it's looking yeah. good. Yeah. All right, great. We have a couple minutes before I'm going to start. Just a little bit. Yeah, okay. just, just. All right. There you go. Is that good? Yep, that's good. Okay. Right. So Debbie Womack says she can hear you. Okay, great. Does it sound okay, Debbie? Am I echoing? Last week we had a terrible echo. Now, there's a little bit of a lag, so it takes a while. Let's see. Okay. Looks right. like it works. Okay, great. Well, I guess I'm going to get started today. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me in my studio. I, I really appreciate it. Love sharing my, my studio space with you and what I've got going on in the studio. Today, I am going to do a quick or, well, somewhat quick, a demo. It's of a fall tree, which I think is apropos this time of year. Here in Portland, it's just absolutely gorgeous right now. Just really crisp and clear, and we've got beautiful fall color, so I'm very inspired by that. And one of the things I want to really focus on in this demo is negative painting. This is something I employ a lot in my work, and I just want to make make it perfectly clear what I'm doing um, so that you can also employ it. It's really a powerful way to go about um, working in pastel painting and, and you know any kind of painting. So I'm going to start with that um, and then I'm going to open things up to Q&A after that but I have just a few announcements before I get going. Today, um, I first of all want to thank everyone that watched last week. We had a few technical difficulties, as I said, mostly audio, and uh, we're just kind of getting going and getting set up. So uh, it wasn't it wasn't our best foot forward, but we're hoping to get that we've got things ironed out and then we'll get better and better at this. Okay, and then I wanted to. Um, a, First of all, thank Pastel Journal for including me in their latest issue. I am part of, I contributed to an article um, called Art After Dark. And so that's so, so nice to be included. So here's my piece. And, um, you know, it's always a really wonderful, proud thing to be amongst other uh, really amazing artists. So um, thanks, Pastel Journal. I really appreciate it. Um, and then um, I wanted to make sure that everyone in the Portland area knows that I'm having a studio sale next weekend, the 8th and 9th, from 10 to 5 here in Milwaukee, Oregon. Milwaukee is a pretty close-in suburb of Portland, so if you're in the Portland area and you feel like stopping by next weekend, um, that would be great to see you. Hopefully we'll have some nice weather still, I hope, and um, we'll be able to open up the studio. And I will, we'll have quite a few lesson pieces on sale, some smaller works, some pieces from the archives, so kind of a variety, so I'd like to do that fun to have a studio sale every year so I just do it just about once a year and then I just wanted to you know you have to plug the website um, painting lessons with Marla check out um, the website for for sales and upcoming events um, live workshops and um, just to see what's happening there um, you can also get um, critiques on the website so that's that's what is going on here and um, so we're going to just bear with us just a moment, and we're going to set up the camera. I'm going to be painting this fall scene um, here, and um, I'll be using my iPad to view it from. And um, so we'll get started. So we'll move the camera and get painting. Let's 
Yeah. Yeah. Let me think. Again. I'm gonna work a little bit larger. So it's not the tiny little mini. People can see it a little bit better. Okay. Oh, All right. I'm gonna put my hair back so it doesn't get in the way. I'm gonna get pinged. Okay. So I love this. This scene, this is a little bit of a tree portrait in that the tree is so um, dominant in the composition. But I will include the, the, the road with the cast shadows. It's very lovely. And I love the, I love the blue, blue sky with the clouds. It's just gorgeous. And so in this piece, I chose this because there is a lot of opportunity to do some negative painting with the foliage and get in there and get some of that um, interesting detail. So I'm going to start out. I always do a little kind of bounding box or floating box for my composition. This gives me, it does a lot for me actually. It gives me a little border with which to make um, test marks on. And I think that that's super important. Um, I want to check out not just the color and the value, but I'm also seeing if the stick that I've picked up, because our sticks get worn down into different shapes and they make different kinds of marks. So I have this area here to make sure that the stick that I've picked up is gonna make the kind of mark that I have in mind. Um, and the next thing that it does it gives me this kind of safe area with which to compose in. And I feel like that's really important as well. So um, let's see, I'm just gonna start in. I don't have a, a thumbnail or anything in this piece. It's a fairly simple composition. So I'm just gonna start in. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is think about the overarching shape of this tree. So I'm going to think about it in kind of a, a faceted um, line here. These shapes get a little bit of the the, the branches and the trunk. But what what is this overarching shape? The first thing. What are you doing there, Kevin? I'm sorry. I'm trying to <laughs> cut trying to get that out. Okay. A little bit of hard enough to All right. cover it up a little bit. So I'm thinking about the 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 contour, the overarching contour, and then also these little kind of subgrouping, submasses within the shape, right? So there's these sort of, this kind of thought in here. All right, so that's just enough of that, I think. I don't think about the gesture of the tree. What, what's it doing? It's doing this kind of thing. So pretty. Now I'm gonna get a little bit more of my just for fun. And this road kind of comes right towards me. Very one point perspective. And I think that that's right about the, the eye level that I want the road to be. It kind of dips and then it comes up. So even though it's landscape and um, a painting, there's a bit of drawing. I'm thinking about these volumes 
within the tree. I'm thinking a little bit about the perspective. It's not overly complicated, but I'm not ignoring that. So I've got that in there pretty well. Now I think I will um, think about just a little bit what the gesture of the clouds or what are they doing back here. So just a couple of things so that I have some motor memory of what's going on here and um, just some idea of that gesture. Um, there's a, the, the clouds sort of are hovering right here on the horizon right here and there's blue sky here and a bank of clouds and kind of cumulus clouds and blue sky over here. All right, then um, I want to go ahead and make some kind of idea of this cast shadow that comes across the road and it does so in the distance as well. And then there's some little bit, there's a there's a, some foliage or some brush right here and they're doing that too. They're coming out. So I don't want to forget that. All right. Hey Marla, it looks like there's uh, three people from the UK on the Oh, on the cool. Well, yeah. welcome. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Angela, Lynn, and Mrs. Tigerbaum. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Welcome. All right, so then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of color down in the tree. I'm just going to sort of um, wash it in so I have some, I have to start somewhere. So I'm going to pick something that feels like it's in the middle not too dark and not too light. I've kind of established some drawing. I've got some darks in here, but this tree has got a lot going on in it. So uh, I'm going to start, I think, with some kind of middle. I think this kind of gold. Um, now it looks really light, but if I were to put some white next to it or almost white this is a very light yellow it's not it's pretty middle it's in the middle so i'm going to come along this is a pretty little little piece i don't see what else i i don't see another larger piece let me see if i can get a little bit larger piece of that same color or something similar and that's a little bit too light. And this one isn't good. And this one, this one's good. This one's better. So that, see, this makes a bigger stroke. It makes a more wash-like stroke. And that's what I'm after right now. I'm just going to come in, and I'm just going to come in the whole, pretty much the whole shape of this. But you see this light touch that I'm using? I'm really just kind of whispering this stick over the paper right now. Just very, very light touch. And I really encourage everybody to, the Pastellus, my student, to really cultivate that light touch. It's really easy to get, especially with all the wonderful, amazing pastels that are out on the market, you know, Terry Ludwig's, and this is a unison, um, to get too heavy too fast and I don't really want to do that. This is a unison. I don't know the color names of very many but I do happen to know the color name of this one. It's a unison uh, yellow 13. It's a color that I'm really fond of. All right so now I'm going to go for something just a tad bit darker for some of these um, to get a little volume in my tree. So I'm gonna pick this, this kind of rust color. Seems like the good thing. Now, to me, I'm, I'm always thinking about what's the easiest way for me to start. And the easiest way for me to start anything is to think about the local color. And, um, you know, then I'll try to get Playful and invent color, but 
Well, my first pass on something, local color is, is a good, good way for me to go. Okay, I'm just going to start in like that. Now, it's going to come down. I, don't want, I want to work the whole thing and bring the whole painting at once. So in other words, I don't want to finish this tree. I want to get all the relationships built before I do very much more in my tree. So in order to do that, I'm going to, what's the next biggest, easiest shape? Well, the sky doesn't feel too easy yet because I'm not quite sure of the value. So this foreground shape feels fairly easy. And again, I'm going to start in the middle of it and be driven by the local color. This is a little bit bright. I like that green. But I, I think I'm going to go for that because it's, I like to start out a little bit brighter than I'm going to end up. For me, it's easier to settle color down to neutralize it. So if it's more intense, or another word for that would be saturated, it's easier for me to settle that down than it is to get um, the brighter color back. So I'm going to start out a little bit brighter. Now going back, you see some little bit darker, more emerald green in here. Again, it's a little bright, but that's okay. Now there's some grass here. All right. Now maybe the road, the road's pretty, maybe I'll wait. I'm not going to do the road yet because <laughs> I, I, I need to get some other relationships going. How about this, this sky here? Um, I want that, the underneath of those clouds. Sort of this kind of a gray. I'm not sure that that's right. Maybe. I won't know yet until I get the blue in there. It's a very light blue, almost something like that. Okay. Yeah, that might be close. That's close. I, I, I don't want it to be too dark. And we'll start there. Now again, see I'm going to come around my tree a little bit. Now this is where I'm, right now I'm already beginning to draw my tree with the negative shape. So this is, this is where I'm already beginning to use the, the negative. So hey Marla, we have yeah. more people from the UK, and we have Oklahoma, Kentucky, Florida, oh, nice. uh, Portugal, cool. South Africa. Oh, wow, cool. All over the place. This is great. Oh, neat. Great. The well, Netherlands. Welcome. Yeah, this is excellent. Okay. Come in. Okay. Now, I'm going to come You guys can ask questions. It's okay to ask questions while I'm painting. I'm fine with that. So, you can see I'm using the sky to paint the trees. This is something I do all the time. And I only really have the opportunity to do that. Now, I don't want to paint the whole sky and try to get the tree on top. I plan for my tree, and then I'm picking out and knitting the tree, just like a little grandma, I'm knitting. <laughs> Getting that tree in there. Looks like we have a question. Okay. Uh, Linda wants to know, how does one distinguish messy from impressionistic, especially on the edges? Oh, good question. Well, so to me, impressionistic is something that, that um, serves the, the, the emotion or feeling of the moment. So if your painting is doing that, then you've achieved that impressionist feel that, that I'm usually hoping for. Um, um, a, a painting, when it, 
when it serves as a unified whole, when I look at it and there isn't anything that's popping out um, that it it needs my attention, then um, then I've I've achieved that and it's not necessarily messy. You know, everyone's idea of what is um, uh, the level of finish. You know, some people like to like things. You know, they're attracted to to work that is tighter and so has a little bit more polish. And um, you know, that's that's definitely a very personal thing because I I've been reading just recently. There's a um, a book by Sue Rowe, R O E, about the Impressionists. And, you know, <laughs> the Salon, they used to think the Impressionists were, you know, terrible. So um, it's very personal. It's a personal taste and it's also cultural. So here we go. We're getting into the road here. And I want to light, darken the road as we go back. So that's that's kind of cool, getting that going. Now I'm going to get the, the sky back behind the tree a little bit. I hope that answered your question. Best as I could <laughs> articulate while I'm painting. That's great. So it's starting to get the tree established. It's nice. Now let's go up here and get some of this, um, the blue of the sky going. That blue, um, I don't want it to be too dark. Um, I want it to be that nice bright blue, but I, in order to get that, I think I'm gonna need a couple different kinds of blue. So I'm gonna mix in that kind of aqua and then a blue that's a little bit more periwinkle. And that's just something that I kind of know um, more than anything else that I'm going to need. So again, I'm getting some of the, as I'm doing this, the sky, I'm also painting the tree and working on the contour and the shape of the tree. Getting a little double dip here, I love that. That's always a good thing. Got a few more questions. All right. Um, do you always use, uh, do you strictly use pastel matte paper or do you use other brands? I definitely use other brands. I, I'm i really loving pastel matte. Um, I kind of like to go in, in sort of sprints or spurts with things and really explore um, materials, really see what I can get out of them. Um, so I'll usually stick with something for a while, but um, likely I'll be bouncing around to something else eventually. Um, I do also really, really love UART. Of course, I really love or loved um, Kitty Wallace, but um, it's really hard to come by these days. So, um, yeah, I think it's really smart to explore a, a lot of different materials because um, you never know what's going to really just, you know, float your boat that you're really going to... Um, resonate with and it's going to help you further your your individual style of painting it's just going to work for you so um you know you want to be able to play around and bounce around a little bit okay. elizabeth has a question mm -hmm. uh, she she says she knows that value is important but how do you choose what color you uh, you will go with when you want to jazz it up do you choose by temperature and intensity yeah, so I'm orchestrating the, the, I don't really focus too much on color temperature, um, though, you know, that does come into play. Color temperature is just another act, aspect of hue, to me, the way I learned color theory. So I'm orchestrating the, 
intensity of the color that's mainly what I'm, I'm doing. So I'm going to have, in, in this case, this is a nice example. Obviously, the tree is going to have the most intensity. And right in here, which is going to be um, a nice kind of focal point of my piece when it gets all pulled together, um, jazzing it up. Yeah, knowing you know how far to go to to do that is um, you know is something that you know you learn over time. Also, I really think that um, just having a good handle on color theory and knowing that within every value mass, any and every value mass, you want to have a variety of, of colors. So right now in my piece, each of these value masses, it's pretty one-dimensional. I've used kind of one stick. I'm, th this is the exception. I've got a couple different colors in the tree. But everything else is pretty much like, here's this one green. Here's this one sort of tan. But as I'm working through this, I'm going to add some different kinds of green and maybe even different colors that are of similar value but of different intensity. So having a really strong understanding of color theory is absolutely key to um, being able to really do what you're exactly what you're talking about, and knowing when to, to jazz it up, when to when to go further, when to when to when to quit. So the, the thing about this um, fall tree, the, the tree of itself isn't, it doesn't mean anything unless it's got its context. So build, I'm always trying to build my whole painting all together, all at once. So now I can go in. Now here's this negative painting going in and getting these negative shapes really, um, it's fun too, it's way harder. I, I couldn't get all these little intricate little um, branches and um, leaves, I wouldn't even want to, but I can suggest them with the negative shapes. So Betty Edwards' um, book on drawing on the right side of the brain, if you're interested in, in um, working on with the negative shapes. That's a great one to start with, of course. It's classic. Just get in here and really play with these shapes. You gotta come in with the sky that's correct behind it. Oh, um, we have a um, comment from Yael, Yael, Yael Maimon. Oh, hi. From, yeah, she's a she's a famous one. Yes, you are. Hi. She's, she says, "Hi, Marla. Looks wonderful already." Oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, we're trying out this live stream stuff. It's pretty pretty dangerous, I think. <laughs> okay, now I'm just gonna go in here and get a little more volume. So these are the masses, the tree masses that are coming forward a little bit. I remember that brighter yellow. The thing about trees, you want to think about they're, they're, they're three-dimensional. So some of the branches are moving away from you and some are heading towards you. And being, you know, depicting that is um, one of the things that I'm always you know, trying to do. All right, now I'm more negative. And varying your strokes, not being afraid to move your hand around and get different kinds of marks and cultivating different kinds of mark making. And, and that's, a, that's, you know, that's a thing um, so that you, you that's how we find our own voice as painters, as what kind of marks that we make. All 
All right, now I think I need some dark, more darks on this tree because I'm getting to that point. I'm gonna start, let's see what I want, what I want. I don't know if I wanna go this dark, but I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna see what happens with it. Maybe. Now the thing is, I can come back in with the sky. I can go back and forth. Just because I've got these negative shapes doesn't mean I can't go back and restate them. The beauty, the beautiful thing about pastel. Again, a very, very, very light touch. want a variety in my shapes. Now I'm going to go in and in this within this dark I'm going to add some of this blue spruce. So that's adding on to the variety of the dark. So within that dark mass I'm, I'm adding on more than just one color. Now I think I need to go back and clean up some of this with the sky. So now, now I've got kind of a mess. So this is an opportunity to go in back in with the negative shapes again. So Kimberly has a question. Yep. She says, hi Marla, do you ever use hard pastels to lay out first? Thanks. Yes. Um, and I did that in this case, actually. So I'm using, I used a new pastel to do my drawing. And um, I used some harder, this is a Giro that I'm using right now, actually. So it's considered sort of medium hard. And, and, you know, I, I don't know what it's actually classified. But yeah, I'm gonna tend overall. I want to stay, you know, as a rule of thumb, not a rule, as a rule of thumb. I'm going to stay harder for as long as I can and then move towards softer um, pastels as I um, get further along in the painting process, um, for sure. But that's just a rule of thumb. If I don't have the right um, stick, what I'll do is I'll tend to, I'm going to vary my touch, so I'm going to um, moderate the, the way I'm putting it down to compensate for how that well it might be too soft might be getting too much on there to begin with so I'm gonna try to um, play with that a little bit so that I get the right does that make sense All right. I'm gonna go ahead and <coughs> this in there. All right, so now I'm going to go and get, now I've, I'm fussing around with this too much, and when I'm getting to that point, I want to come along and I want to get go into some other areas, and that's one thing that I think is um, one of the things about having a, um, when you get to have a little more experience painting, you, you Right now, oh, this is looking messy. It's getting a little frustrated with it. Getting, um, you know, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it ten minutes ago, kind of thing. But I feel like I went too far now. So I'm going to leave this alone, and I'm going to move to another section of my painting. Now, the thing about that, I had an instructor that always said, "He said success hides a multitude of errors," and so um, I always remember that that. Um, so if one spot in your painting isn't working, just move, move away from it and move on to another spot. And usually, usually you're going to resolve it. Okay, so let's get some of this going. I think that'll make me happy. I'm feeling like this is kind of dark. 
like the overall kind of bright sunny day that it is so and that's evidenced by the um that strong cast shadow so it's a, it is a bright sunny day got another question from elizabeth yeah. um do you ever use barrier cream on your hands she has concerns about toxicity no i do not i wish you would what i said i wish you would no i don't I do wash my hands a ton, so I'm not um, um, ingesting it. Uh, so I'm gonna mix some other. So this is some other greens that are getting mixed in. I think that sky a little 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 dark behind the kind of lightning, but I'm going to get a little more playful with my negative shapes here. lighter in value, I think. How are we doing on time? What do we got? Time Pretty good. We're at 11.34. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, it's coming together really nicely. Right. Now I'm going to start adding on a little bit different color to the tree. I feel like some of this would be nice. This, this is kind of an olive green. Just, you know, playing with the gesture of it. What's the character of this tree? What's it doing? These beautiful, beautiful cascading branches. It's so stunning. Can I use this? Can I use this down here? Yeah. Oh, now I see. Ooh, I want to lighten that up. This foreground even more. And some just playful. Mark making. Get a little carried away. Another question from Yael. She says, um, do you use fixative spray during any stage of the painting? I usually do. If I'm intending to frame something, I'm going to spray it at the end. But usually not in the midst of painting. I don't. Um, unless I just am really at a place where, whoa, I, I just can't get any more on. But I don't, I don't find that too often when I'm in that position. Um, every now and then. But I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't use a whole lot of spray. See what else do I want to do here? Darken this back here. 
I'm saving a couple things to do. Um, I'm saving uh, some lights on on in the tree um, because I know that will be super fun to do. Uh, what else am I saving? I'm gonna mix in some fill the tooth of the of the sky just a little bit. What else am I saying? I, I do that all the time. I'm saving really fun stuff for me to do um, because it's because <laughs> I can. And Valerie wants to know what kind of fixative, when you do use fixative, what kind do you oh, use? Oh, yeah, good question. Uh, so, <laughs> fixative is a long story. Um, I used to use the last go, which is a beautiful, you know, fixative. When I first started doing pastels, that fixative was like, I don't know, nine, ten dollars a can. And then very quickly, it was, uh, well, 13. <laughs> so pretty soon, now, I, I don't know, it's like, I don't know, some crazy amount, like over you know, over $25 a can, right? So I was like, oh my God, when you're doing a big show and if you have large pieces, you, it's, and you're, and you're spraying a bunch at the end, it doesn't matter whether you're spraying at the end or what, you're, it's, it's expensive. So I started looking around for something else. So now I use, let's, hey, can you go grab a can of that? I think sure. there's some. It's the, um, Krylon Fine Art Fixative with, um, it's the fine art, not not the workable fixative. Don't use that and because um, it will really darken the value of the piece. Um, the Krylon Fine Art, um, I, I feel like it's pretty good. And it, I, I believe right now it's about $12 a can, so a little more reasonable still, you know, still can be, you know, pricey. Do we have some? Yeah, here's the okay. Carolina and here's the Phoenix Rosaka. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is this is the one I use. So it's got this, it's fine art. It's got to be that. And it's got the red Krylon and the blue. Yeah, so that's the one. The other stuff, not so good, I don't think. So this has got some fun stuff. I think there's some good stuff going on. But the main thing that I want to show is this negative painting in here. So I can come in here and pick out whatever I want. Because I've painted the whole thing. It's really thin. So I can still, I have lots of opportunity to go in here and um, do some fun mark making and really... Uh, do whatever I want. Get I could get this really tight if I wanted to. I don't want to, but if I wanted to come in here and really fiddle around with the um, the branches and whatnot, I could. Little dots and dashes to to sort of emulate the chaos of nature. I want that. I want that in my paintings. Okay, a couple things I want to do. I want to get that blue sky bluer. So I'm going to come in and really hit that. And just a few spots. And I think that kind of furthers the, the idea that I had in this bright, um, sunny, sunny day, and I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more bright color on the tree. Now, let's see, how, how far do I want to go? Do I want that? Yeah, I guess I do. Just let me go for it. So this is that, that idea of how far do you go with color? How do you punch it up? Okay, here's, here's where. So now I've got, I've got, a, a, I, I've got the structure of what I want now. You know, how far do I want to take it? So now the other thing, see what I'm doing, I'm letting this color drift in 
to other shapes into the sky just a little bit. So I so I'm gonna keep that real soft edge and a, and a soft look. I don't want I want don't want a hard edge look. So I'm still using a really light touch. So another question uh -huh. um, from Angela. She asks, do you try to fill up the tooth all over the painting or will you leave some of the paper showing? No, they're just a, I'm going to leave some of the paper showing. Um, there's, I, on the whole, I want the painting to have a unified look. So um, I'm going to try to maintain the, the amount of paper showing through in a consistent way, if that makes sense. So um, I'm not going to fill the whole tooth anywhere. I'm gonna have, I want it to be sort of consistent throughout. Well, here's a really um, pertinent question for us right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth asks, how do you store your paintings when not framed? Ah. You're getting something built to do that, right? Like, right. Um, yeah, we, yeah we're, we're having a, a, a shelving unit built in the studio. But the, for pastels, it's a little tricky. So I have a flat file. And um, that flat file houses a lot of unframed pieces. And I just put a piece of glassine between them. One other, if you don't have a flat file, a good, a good thing to, to do is get um, a couple sturdy pieces of foam core and um, put some glassine in, and then you can just make a nice kind of portfolio that houses unframed stuff. It's a good good way to go. Okay, so I want to push this back a little bit. Well, there was a question uh, farther in the stack. I didn't get to it, but the person asked if the um, test area ever distracts you. The test, no. It's, it's essential for me. I have to have it. And I'm always amazed um, by students that don't test out what they're going to do and then people say well I, I make mud I make mud a lot well you can make mud if you don't test out your mark I want to test out what I'm going to do before I put it down and I'm, I'm doing that a lot you can see all the marks that I've got I'm not sure so I'm not always 100% sure about this color the value what, what's it going to do or what the stick is going to do so yeah, I, I need that. I absolutely, it's absolutely essential to my painting to have that test area. And if I don't have, if I'm painting on a board, which I, I do occasionally, um, I'm going to um, have a, another board or not, another similar or hopefully very similar piece of paper that um, is going to serve as my little test area. How are we doing on time? Because I want to have a little bit of time for... 11.45. Right. I think it's looking, the painting's looking pretty good. Yeah, it is. It is. I think it's... Yeah, when you're under a little pressure, you, you definitely do deliver. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Sometimes not. Sometimes not. Sometimes I get in here and it just doesn't happen. That's okay. That's part of the. That's part of it. Just you know, have to roll with that. You can't always be. If you think you're always going to come in and um, make a. If it, well, actually, you know, I was watching YouTube recently and there was another painter whose work I really like and I really like his YouTube channel too. I'm not going to say his name. But he was saying, hey, you should come in to your studio and every time it should, you should orient yourself. You're going to make your masterpiece. And I, I just kind of disagree with that. I mean, I think that you should plan. You should, um, you know, I'll, you're always hoping for, for the best, right? But, but I don't think that you need to feel like you go in there and every time it's going to be the the masterpiece. I think that on the whole, it's just kind of better to go in there and just try to get better. <laughs> I 
That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, be a better painter. That's, and I don't try to compare. I don't compare myself to other people. If I did that, I'd sort of give up because there's so many great, wonderful painters out there, and it's so fun these days that we can we can see what they're doing. We can share on Pinterest. We can share on Facebook on the on the web. It's just really pretty astounding, and we get to be inspired and. Learn from other other painters. Okay, I mean we're we're really getting to that point. It's about eleven forty seven, so okay. Maybe All we right. could uh, make yeah, that see. Let's maybe I'm gonna just give this a couple. Okay, I'm just I want to keep going. There's a couple more things I'm gonna do, and then we'll um, we'll stop and do some Q and A. All right. Yeah. It's fun. Cool. There's a, obviously there's I could spend another half an hour on this and and pull it to a point where um, I like it even better. But I think the essential um, idea behind it I think is conveyed, and you know that's what I want. So you know I can come along. I can put some. Some little bits, build some texture in it here and there. Um, there's a little, some distant trees. I could be working on this area a little bit more, a little bit more. But I like the looseness of it. I like the mark making. Um, I feel like it conveys the, um, the the quality of light and such. So yeah, let's yeah. take a look. Well, uh, that's good. I might have come in here with a little bit more of some lights in the foliage, but yeah. And, you know, I don't do a whole lot of finger blending. I'm mostly, if I'm doing anything, I'm not really totally, I'm just softening an edge. That would be what I'm thinking about a little bit. And somebody right. said they wanted to take a look at your palette, but I think that might be for another day. That's a, that's a pretty big can of worms. All right, well. We could do a quick little one. All right. There it is. Yeah, it's pretty it's, impressive. It's beautiful. I really... Um, Love walking in here, and still it's kind of breathtaking. It's, if I've been away on a trip, and I'm coming, in, oh yeah, my pastels. Now there are a lot of pastels that have a lot more than these. I, I don't feel like it's necessary. I feel like I've I've kind of covered what I need to cover. It's organized um, by um, hue, value, and saturation. I've got a neutral section over here, so I've got. Um, um, low key to high key and um, I can kind of do it without kind of motor memory is good because I have this the same the same organization in my travel palettes my travel boxes so whether I'm on the road um, teaching a workshop playing or painting or I'm in the studio it's the same it's the same kind of action going on um, yeah and I have a variety of brands in here. So I've got Terry Ludwig's. I've got some Mountain Vision. There's Unison in here. Um, Giro's New Pastels. Um, yeah, I've got some, got some Blue Earth. I like these a lot. They're nice. Um, what else have I got in here? Yeah, so I've got some, I have some Schmenke's probably. Um, a few Center Lies. I'm not... I don't buy a lot of those because I um, find that they just they really just kind of crumple. Um, but the half stick sets are good, especially for students that are wanting to develop a, a palette um, fast. But um, yeah, so that's that's it. Let's see if we have some more questions and. Call it a day. Thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks so much. Back. How are we doing? Pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get some uh, some questions oh, when I get this thing set up. Little, so I keep a little um, damp rag here by my palette to keep my hands clean.
in between stuff. I need this because so, there are times even when I'm um, do I have stuff? A little on your forehead there. <laughs> yeah. Oh good. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Thanks for... All right. Yes, and this was this is a little tray that was given to me by a um, a workshop participant, Linda Barnicott in Pittsburgh. She does amazing work, um, very focused on Pittsburgh. Uh, it's really beautiful. All right. Yeah, so um, let's see. There's some questions here. Well, everyone is thanking you for this oh. lovely painting. Oh, yeah. Well, you're welcome. My pleasure. Love painting, love sharing. Well, that's an interesting question. Let me just go yeah. back to this. Let's see. Um. Um, a question about the lesson. If we do a painting based on one of your lesson plans, but use our own reference photo, is it permissible to enter that piece in a juried show? Well, based on my lesson plan, I, I think so. I think it, it gets a little gray when you're, um, when you're copying, obviously when you're copying one of my pieces. You know, from from my perspective, um, you know, it it's not just from my perspective. It's from your. It's because of your 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 peers. Um, I think that that is fine to do as long as it, it really is your own reference photo and your own composition. If you if you've learned from me and um, and it's you know it's an extension of a lesson that that I've. Um, presented, I think, I think that it's fine, but you know. So here's another question from Sherry. She says, so when you do a watercolor or underpainting, mm -hmm. uh, you really don't have anything to test, uh, um, test on colors accurately. Right. So that underpainting to me is sort of that first pass. It's, um, you could, con you could consider it walking. And so, yeah, you, you know, you, you, you may you may want it to be accurate that way. You could also have another piece of paper if you're really concerned about the color. You could have another piece of paper that you're testing that color on. But to me, it, you're going to have a whole other pass with the pastel, and that's where you're really going to want to you know get the color um, as accurate as you possibly can. Thanks. And Leanne um, wants to know if you would. Uh, would you have used uh, underpainting on this paint on this piece, or did you like just going straight into it? Um, on this one, I went straight into it, it because it, it um, is on um, the toned paper. To me, it's um, not ne not as necessary to do some kind of underpainting. Underpainting is going to really serve as sort of a the um, blocking in phase or the foundation. Um, whereas, you know, I did this sort of with a, you might say, um, a dry underpainting, a grisaille, you know, use the uh, blue spruce and new pastel to kind of, to do um, simultaneously drawing and kind of get some value relationships going. Cool. This kind of dark paper, uh, an underpainting isn't gonna, it isn't gonna show, it isn't gonna, have enough power. So if I'm going to do an underpainting, it's usually on either white or very light off-white, like UART or a pastel matte or pastel premier that's white or nearly white. So that watercolor has a lot of oomph to it. So uh, Angela says, you seem to keep a lovely light touch throughout, plus you use similar gestural marks. This must help you keep, uh, must help you give the wonderful consistency that you have. So she's just talking about your mark making oh, technique. Yeah. So, yes, I do keep a very light touch until I don't anymore, <laughs> right? So, you know, eventually I'm going to want to give a few things some power. But, you know, like all relationships, something is only powerful next to something that is softer, something's only light next to something that's dark, something's only intense next to something that's dull. So it's orchestrating all of the very wonderful, challenging, complicated aspects of a painting. And it, 
that mark making, and I call it mark making vocabulary, is something to um, cultivate and to practice and to, um, to, to, so you develop your own unique, that's what gives our painting, it's, our paintings their own style. So that's, you know, yeah, that's something to, that's something to work on, work towards. I'm still working on it. I'm definitely still working. I'm completely still working on it with my oil painting, which I'm really spending a lot of time with lately, and I love it. And I'm, I'm finding my way with the oils. You know, do I want to paint thick? Do I want to paint thin? Do I want to, you know, I, do I want to make scratchy marks? Do I want, you know, what do I want? Yeah, mark making is a big, yeah. a big part of the. Yeah. You have a whole work, workshop based on yep, that. Yes, so. I have a workshop on my website, <laughs> <laughs> making your mark, and it's all about that and just bringing consciousness and intention to marks. Cool. Well, um, it's about eleven fifty-eight, and okay. uh, looks like this, the uh, questions have kind of slowed down. Alrighty, um, good. And thanks everyone for joining us today and we'll be making this a regular thing we hope there'll be times when we won't be able to when I'm on the road or such but while I'm in town we'll try to be here on Tuesday mornings at 11 and do these live streams do some kind of demo or Q&A or you know some little little um, bit that, um, that we hope is um, useful and helpful to your painting journey okay See you guys soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right.